is walking the walk of God. Who would you call a walker for God or with God? One who shows up in church and who attends all services and who hears everything and who can repeat every message Pastor Colin preached this year and who has all magazines decorating his shell and has bought the, the top 10 series of major preachers across the planet. Those are the ones I call tape warm victims. They gather tapes. But they don't do nothing. Do you understand me? It's not wrong to buy tapes. But after you have listened, do you do it? Until you do the word, you are not doing the work. Hear me. Until you do the word, you are not doing the work. Say it with me. Until I do the word, I'm not doing the work. If all you do is enjoy service after service, and message after message, he said, well, how was that Sunday? Wow, the man so preached. It was so wonderful. But the mentioning cell group, you don't belong to any. G12. So G12. No, I'm going to start my own G70. <laughs> You're not set on the authority. It's not going to work for you. James chapter 1, who is a doer? Who is walking for God? James 1. I want to round up. I thank you for listening. I hope I didn't bore you. And if I do, don't invite me again. Pastor will bring me. (laughs) If pastor brings me, I'll come again. (laughs) You didn't invite me, did you? Happy to meet you. James chapter 1 verse 21, James 1 21, therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted what? Word. It's an oppression of the spirit. It's a shout of the spirit. It goes through, pierces through your heart and your mind, separates your emotions and locate what needs to be removed and takes its root there. Lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away and immediately forgets that kind of man he was. Let me tell you who that is. Every victim of inferiority complex will spend more time before a mirror adjusting everything. And they say, I look good. The moment it turns from there and he meets someone who says, who are you? Get off my back. He said, I'm not good after all. He goes back to the mirror again. And he, I look good, don't I? Then he goes and somebody says, you are ugly. He said, I am. He goes back in the mirror. <laughs> He doesn't know who he is. Why? He has received, refused to believe what he said that came from his heart that God made me, then I am perfect. I am beautiful. I'm a miracle going somewhere to happen. I'll never forget in my life. I'm sorry for sharing this, but I will share it. It just dropped in my spirit. I went to propose to a lady in my university days. She didn't say to me, yes or no. She went behind my back and said, look at that mosquito. (laughs) And then her friends told me that she said I was a mosquito. Now, (laughs) listen to this. I am 50 years old. I weigh 60 kg. 60 kilograms. What do you think I weighed when I was 24? (laughs) Then I went back to her and said, Woman, I heard what you said about me. Even mosquitoes can make a king to slap himself. He only needs to say, And the king will slap himself. (laughs) And then we left college.
knowledge and everyone went his own his own way she's in this country as seven our, our husband our family friends as a matter of fact they do legal services for us in this nation and then her husband needed some financial assistance i didn't know who her husband was until that time and she came to us for that financial assistance myself and my partner i was still in in, in business then and we gave the facilities to him and he said oh please i would like you to have dinner with us my wife had cooked i didn't know who she married who he married <laughs> so i came with my partner and here we are in their home and they opened the door here was mrs <laughs> i almost i almost mentioned the name there and I said, oh you're welcome sir i said who and the husband said, you know yourself? I said, yes, back in college, even mosquitoes are rich now. <laughs> you must know your God in order to know yourself. If you don't know your God and know what your God calls you, others will give you other assignments and you'll be running from pillar to post looking for what is not lost. You must know yourself because you know your God. Now listen to this. Listen, for if anyone is a hearer, verse 23, of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a, forgetting, a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the, not word, work. Read it. He's now a doer of the work. Why? Because he's been a doer of the word until you do the word you do not do the walk let me round off with the spirit of faith i've told you faith comes in these four ways to us number one through our understanding being open and jesus does that from time to time when you cry unto him then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures they walk with him for three years and they did not understand our clue they had no clue they did not understand anything until their understanding were open you're going to pray for yourself today and say lord open my understanding number two faith you can't separate faith from the holy spirit that's why you need the first step in the morning to see how what you ask for is the Holy Spirit in prayers. Because he knows exactly what to pray when you are feeble and weak and you don't even know what to say. It's a gift. Faith is a gift of the Spirit. Faith is a fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5 it becomes character. That is rooted in trust because you know God. That's why Joseph could do what he did. You know God will come through. That's why Daniel could do what he did. That's why Misha, Shadrach, and Abednego could do what they did. That's why Esther could defy the law of the king and appear before the king when it was not, she was not called. That's why Mordecai refused to bow. It's become a lifestyle for them. It's not gimmicks. It's not a game. It's not cliche. It's not a phrase. The other day I was saying to my, my niece, and how are you? He said, I'm, I'm blessed and highly favored. I said, when did you become Mary and when did Gabriel appear to you? <laughs> if care is not taken, cliches will replace the substance. And you think you are making confession of faith. If you are a rebel living in rebellion, it does not matter what you confess. It's not going to work. Let me show you one more. And I close with this. The spirit of faith. I love this. I love this. I love this. I'm telling you because it's worked for me. The spirit of faith. Second Corinthians chapter number 4. The spirit of faith. This one is very infectious. Do you understand me? Second Corinthians, what did I say? 4. 